Hola Libras, this is your bonus reading for now through mid-October because you guys were my second highest views. Okay, so I have a Lenormand spread. I did it in a three card spread. It's supposed to be um, situation, action, outcome. Okay, um, however, all the cards are kind of feeding off of each other and telling me the same thing. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit here and there and then probably talk about the whole thing. So in your situation, there is a lady. Okay. If it were a man, man would have popped out too, or would have popped out by itself. You could be the lady or you could be Lady Libra, <laughs> or there's a lady in your life. She does seem to be the older lady. So this could be a mother figure. And the reason I say that is because the overarching theme in this reading at the bottom is house. This has to deal with family. However, um, I think about dream interpretation sometimes where the house represents, you know, internally, um, kind of like a car, um, represents you inside, like how you go through life. So a house can also be internal. Okay. But I do feel like you're struggling with a family member. Okay. But there's also internal struggles. Now there's some kind of communication with this lady and you're trying to resolve something, um, cause there's been a lot of conflict. Okay. That's the situation in a very general nutshell. It gets a little bit deeper um, when we get the other cards out. Okay, so situation, all right? Okay, action. You have the mountain and child. Some of you may be the child, and this may be the mother figure. I mean, we can say it's a parent um, because we do have people who are parents who are maybe trans or whatnot, okay? Um, we have a block and child. So the communication may have to be halted because it's too, well, emotionally unhealthy. Okay. Because we are dealing with house here. So I feel like it's about family. Okay. Mountain and house talk about difficulties with the home, difficulties with family. Um, possibly having to do with when somebody was a child, so in childhood, or how one raised their children or what someone did to children, okay? Um, it's something that nobody talks about, okay? It's the elephant in the room. Also, there's some people who have kind of been living, not because they're naive, okay? But they are naive in a certain way because they were raised or sheltered in a certain way, but it wasn't, the intention wasn't to shelter. It was more like somebody was very austere. Somebody was very strict. And therefore the person grew up this way, never knowing that wasn't the norm. Okay. So they were sheltered in a way, but they were also just, they were raised very differently from the mainstream. Okay. And so this person never got to leave their comfort zone. They've just had a very kind of boring existence as far as um, possibly being sheltered. Um, I'm also seeing that the home life never changed. So somebody was like always the same in the family. So the inexperience could be blocking or hindering somebody. Um, so some, I know we all blame our parents for something, okay? Um, but that could be some of the issue here. I'm seeing it was a small problem. And then eventually, because new insights came in, it grew into be a bigger and bigger problem. It's like the silence is growing and it's deafening. Um, could be that somebody has a difficult child. Somebody had a difficult child and maybe they reared them more strictly, um, maybe more a little bit abusively, emotionally or physically. I'm seeing there's no communication between parent and child or very difficult communication. Maybe you only see each other around holidays. And even then it's like you can feel the tension. Instead of cutting the turkey, you're cutting the tension. Um, okay. 
So that's the action, I mean, situation and action. So a child may have to cut off communication, maybe an action. If somebody receives communication, they may have to cut it off. Um, let's see, there's enough room. Yeah, I think there's enough room. Three cards popped out for your outcome. Okay. Now I will tell you the stork tried to come out in reverse twice. Once while I was shuffling and like 10 cards came out and I couldn't do it. But it came out again in three cards and it was reversed. But you don't really read these in reverse. But that just does kind of let me know storks about change and something happening over and over again like migration cycles. And so I'm seeing somebody may put an end to an abusive cycle as an outcome. Okay. Which is also part of an action, which is also leading up to the situation, you know, seeing what, what is the situation. It looks like it has to deal with abuse and morality and possibly sexuality. Um, so it's not an easy reading. Um, somebody really has had a hard time. I mean, it says it's family. This may not be family related, but the house is the overarching, you know, it's like it's taking over the reading, which in this reading, it seems to be a very common thing for the family or morality of a family um, to kind of like be so choking. So, um, I don't know, it just encroaches on everything. Okay, so, but when the stork was in reverse, that made me think about how somebody may have a hard time moving on. Um, and they're going to put an end to a cycle, possibly. Okay, so with house and stork, I'm seeing somebody may actually move. So if somebody's really young and they've had not a lot of experience, but they've had a hard home life, they may be moving, but it's kind of hard for them because they don't have experience. Also with mountain and stork, I mean, they're just near each other, but I was getting this feeling of the silence, like the mountainous silence had kept somebody from changing, but they're going to let that transform them instead. Okay. So it's an outcome. Somebody's choosing these things with the mountain. They're not going to let their inexperience or their young age or something that happened in childhood, stop them. Although <laughs> it very much could, but they're not going to let it. Okay. They're going to let it stop somebody else. <sighs> but somebody does not want the transformation. This could be the person who's difficult to communicate with. Cause I get the feeling this person is very moralistic and self-righteous and they don't ever change. They're, they're blocking new beginnings, okay? Which also tells me the stork, why it's reversed. So the reversal could be the other person you're dealing with. Could be you, okay? And then the upright of the stork could be you, okay? Because I feel like the family member that won't change isn't you. But, you know, these things can change or flip. I'm also seeing that there's a need for change. Somebody wants something to stop. And because the stork represents cycles... This is a challenge that will keep coming up until it's mastered. Could be dealing with abuse, okay, sexually even, um, physical, morally, okay. It's going to keep popping up, okay. I mean, if we had the moon here, I'd say somebody had PTSD, but I'm not seeing it. Also, because this is a return of something abusive, this could be return of one's enemy, return of somebody who is like an enemy, even if they're in your family. This is also saying, I mean, it's kind of funny because the stork was reversed. I mean, we don't read these in reversals. You just don't. But it kept coming out in reverse twice. And then I had to flip it up right. And then one of the meanings to mountain and stork, which I could have just gotten from having to turn the card sideways or reversed, is that you're going to have to reorient yourself to get something done. It's a very difficult journey from what I can tell, but you've already been going on a difficult journey, even if you didn't know it. All right. With house and lilies, I'm seeing very strict morals. Um, 
And then we had the silence, and that kind of led to a, a peaceful home life in some ways. But also somebody's longing for a change to bring about a peaceful home life. Now, if you're already grown and married, um, this could be saying you want a peaceful home life within your house, and you can't get that until it's fixed with your childhood home life, okay? Or you had to get away from an abusive childhood home life in order to have a peaceful home life, even with yourself or with the family, okay? Now, with the whip and lilies, okay? So we have two cards, you know, kind of clarifying or going with lilies. It says, standing against abusive behavior. So it's very rebellious in nature, but we have this, you know, strictness. So the rebellion may not actually be real rebellion. You know, it's probably being, you know, the good kind of moral, um, but it's going to be seen as rebellious. And in this way, it is rebellious because you are going against the norm, but it's the norm in an abusive situation. <laughs> um, and we all know that, that abuse is not normal, um, even if it does happen to be the norm in certain cultures or situations. Okay. There's a way in this family that conflict has been handled. Okay. Conflict was always handled in a certain way. And you're expected to handle it in this way, which is most likely silence. Okay. Or some kind of abuse. And that's why it's rebellious because you're not going to be silent and you're definitely not going to be abusive. I can see that from this. Um, somebody's having to fight against shame. Somebody feels shame. Um, possibly guilt, but mostly shame. And whatever punishment somebody gets or whatever consequences come from this, you feel is justifiable because somebody did something morally wrong and you're having to stand up for it because the innocent were punished at some point. And so the indignation that you're feeling is righteous. Okay. Even if everybody else in this just, I want to say exhausting, but that's not it in this just encroaching household um, or family dynamic, they may not see it that way. Like we've always done things this way and this is the way it's going to be. And your cause is righteous. Okay. With the stork and Lily, I'm seeing moral values changing. Okay. If you had a certain way to believe growing up, your moral values changed. And that, in that way it's considered rebellious. And I'm also seeing your longing for peace, like you're trying to find peace. Okay, now this part's going to be kind of hard, okay? This is the advice, as well as your outcome, okay? I get a little emotional thinking about this, oh my goodness, okay. So Libras, this says you're going to move on from this past life into peace, okay? Lilies are very peaceful. You're going to get that. Okay. Now I feel like, you know, obviously we have moving on peace, all that, but we still have the birch rod here. So there is kind of that small little chip on the shoulder that you might take with you, but overall you have, you will have peace if you haven't already gotten it. And it's really hard for me to talk about. Oh my goodness. It's a real emotional reading all of a sudden. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I am a Libra moon, so maybe that's what it is. Okay. So we get, we get this idea of that prayer. I can't remember what it's called, but Kind of like a prayer of acceptance, not to accept what's wrong, okay, but accepting what you cannot change. There are some things you cannot change, like a person. You can change yourself and how you act. So you are going to move on. 
and you're going to treat someone well who did not treat you well okay it's very difficult um, you kind of have to accept that this person has to deal with whatever they're dealing with um, if it's a parent I kind of think of biblical stuff where you can come to a parent and tell them one time kind of a thing but after that it's considered like disobedience kind of thing there's also the same idea in the Bible to bless those who curse you and pray for those who persecute you, those kind of things, to love your enemies. And that's really what's coming through here. So again, the idea with mountain and stork is you have to reorient yourself okay, to get the job done. You may have to literally move, okay, but you have to change your mindset, maybe some morals, to treat somebody well. And the thing here is it's saying the likelihood of them transforming is pretty good if you treat them well. Because there is a sense of guilt here in some way, so this person may start to feel guilty if you treat them well, knowing what they've done to you, okay? Because everybody knows. <laughs> it's like, oh, we just don't talk about that. You know, not in this family. So this says love on the austere person. And by doing that, you show them true virtue. They may think they're righteous and virtuous, but by loving on them, you're showing them true virtue, okay? I'm not saying it's going to be easy. <laughs> All you can do is love on this person. Treat them right. You probably move, though. You'll probably do it from afar. And that's it. Okay. But it's going to be a recurring thing, like forgiving somebody daily. Because it's a recurring moral issue regarding abuse, emotional or physical. Okay. Now, with this letter, okay... I'm seeing there has to be a willingness to listen. There will be an honest conversation. The communication will make things better. It's going to be like a truce or a peace talk. Nobody's going to try to manipulate anybody. Nobody's going to come in with lies or half-truths. Everybody's going to talk. Or your intention will be to talk. It's going to be a well-intentioned conversation. It may be why a child's not talking to somebody. Okay. I'm not saying it won't go downhill from there. But I'm saying that might come in at first. And that might bring up a bunch of things. But it's a very difficult moral situation. Somebody's going to challenge specific morals, okay? And this person's stubbornness about these morals or these virtues or self-righteousness is the obstacle here. It's also the keeping silent about a moral issue. That's the obstacle here. So you may have been made to keep silent and it cost you something personally. That's an obstacle. And it's going to be very hard for you to rebel and stand up and do the right thing. One, to rebel against whatever has been established. But also it's hard to do the right thing and treat this person right. I'm not saying treating them right is being silent. because That's definitely not here. I'm seeing standing up for oneself, standing up for others, being open and honest, but in a peaceful way. And then treat them right. So something you thought was normal, maybe growing up, it's not normal. Okay. Also with the whip here and stork. See, it's a long process. Okay. And you may feel like giving up because it was in reverse. Okay. But it's going to be a long process to get justice. Of course, justice is you, Libra. 
So it's a long process to probably get back to yourself or to have the wrongs righted. Okay, long process. If maybe you're moving away or you're changing from a long held moral compass that wasn't right, that you thought was normal, but wasn't normal. There's a little bit of guilt for feeling like you're going your own way. But there's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Somebody has taken so much pain, they've, they've reached their limit. And this is going to transform somebody's shame. Okay. Um, it may also transform someone to start feeling a little bit of guilt about what they've done. Okay. But if somebody's felt ashamed, ashamed for something that somebody else did, I'm seeing that's going to start transforming. But it's only when one starts leaving and going their own way and standing up for themselves. There's just this inner transformation. But so again, we have the house again. But there's an inner transformation. It just happened to have been brought about by violence in some way. So it feels like there can't be a new beginning because there's something blocking it. And so one has to stand up against the mountain and change it in order for there to be an outcome. I do feel like communication will get blocked at some point or it has been blocked. Um, but then there's the idea of just loving on somebody anyway and treating them right. So it may, it may not stay that way. It may be communication at a distance because we do have the stork here. Ooh. All right, Libra. Oh my goodness. That was a big reading. Okay. Let's see here. Let's get a tarot reading. Let's see what's going for Leap. All right. Libras from now through mid October. I just want to say from that last reading, it looks like you cut a cycle of abuse in some way or recurring um, emotions regarding it, recurring way of thinking. Ooh. So we have Queen of Pentacles. Okay, could be dealing with an earth sign, um, possibly a mother with that. Okay, I'm only pulling cards that pull a face up. Some of you may be expecting. Okay. Ten of Pentacles reversed. Is this going to be the same reading? <laughs> so a difficult mother figure, difficult family, difficult, strict, overbearing morals. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to get a different reading. This must be what you're dealing with, though. So maybe somebody's in the family way, but maybe not the way the family approves of. wanted to pop out five of cups reversed somebody's getting over guilt and shame from a very strict family <laughs> God. okay um also if somebody was a wife and they got divorced for some reason they're getting over that sadness that comes along with it yeah page of pentacles getting over um, rejection this also says go back to ten of pentacles which is here okay and the Ten of Pentacles reverse says go back to Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is being single, possibly a divorcee, okay. Um, but it's being single and happy and successful. Possibly on your own outside of a family situation. My 
goodness. I was hoping we get some love. Okay, let's get Angel Answer deck. Let's see what messages there there are for Libras. Okay. Be assertive. Yeah. That definitely came out. You're going to fight for yourself. Or others, you know, as possible. Oh, and compromise. Okay, I could be saying compromise is an issue here, but again, there is that idea that came up in the first reading, which is, you know, stand up for yourself, say what needs to be said in a peaceful way, and you may have to put some distance between you and somebody, but at the end of the day, you, you still are advised to treat this person um, the way you want to be treated, the way they probably didn't treat you, okay? Because there's this idea, eventually this person will transform, okay? And it'll it'll change them. I'm not saying that's the reason to do it. But if anybody who was once, you know, a bad person, so to speak, could change, that's a really big deal. And so if you have a little small part of that, that that's a good thing. So there may be that idea of you feel like you're compromising your morals when really you're showing the best virtue that was never shown to you. Okay. Remain positive. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Okay. I haven't had a reading like this in a long, long time. So Libras, I'm sorry you're going through it, but it's a journey and it's going to be helpful for you and everybody involved. Okay. All right. Good luck. <laughs>